Okay, it's Jeff here again with the first in a new series of revision videos focusing on the labor market. In this video, it's going to be stat attack. I'm going to work through with you some key data on the labor market. Then in the next video, think about some of the most topical labor market issues to think about. And then we'll look at some questions, including, for example, the impact of government intervention in the labor market on things like labor supply and uh, those kind of issues. So no apologies here. This is stat attack. Let's look at some key data on the labor market, so, because having an awareness of some of the key stats can be fantastic for adding application into your 2022 exam answers and also supporting evaluation. If you know what's going on, it just gives you that little extra advantage in the exam room. So in this short video, we'll run through the data, highlight why it's important in understanding the key issues. Uh, I'll point out when you might want to take a screenshot to add directly to your revision notes. Let's go. Two slides worth. Uh, so here we go. The UK resident population, 67.1 million. That's obviously increased over, over time, particularly with a decade or more of fairly strong net inward migration. Of that population, about 41 million, just a little bit over, is a population of working age. Of course, changes to things like the retirement age and the school leaving age can have an impact uh, both in the UK and also in different countries. Now, again, of that population of working age, uh, there's about 32.5 million people in work. 32.5 million. That's been picking up since the end of the pandemic. Around 8 million of those, uh, just about a quarter, are people in part-time work. That's grown over the years. It's part of our flexible labour market. The unemployment rate is currently 3.8% of the labour force. Tiny exam point, many students say unemployment is 3.8%. Well, that's correct, but percentage of what? So I would put it in percentage of the labour force. That's a key measure. If you're looking at levels, labour force survey, it's about 1.3 million people currently out of work. And again, that's come down from about 1.6 million in the depths of the, the pandemic in the autumn of 2020. Youth unemployment, of course, is higher. It's 11.3% in the UK of 16 to 24 year olds. So it's uh, I don't know, three times higher than the, the UK adult rate. Uh, but that's fallen over the last decade or so. And of course, it's much lower than countries like Spain, uh, where it's 32%. And South Africa, where it's 66%. Two thirds of young people in South Africa are out of work. Staggering. The employment rate is a percentage of the population of working age in work, and it's currently 75.5%. So about three quarters of the population of working age are in work. There are something like 1.25, perhaps let's round up to 1.3 million vacancies. Interesting. These are jobs that have not been filled. The ones that we know about, there could be even more, of course. So we now have a level of unemployment, 1.3 million, which is consistent with or equal to in balance with the number of job vacancies. Well, on the one hand, it's great that there are many jobs available, but equally, what's happening? Why, why are these jobs not getting filled? Are there some frictions, some imperfections, some failures in the labour market, uh, some immobilities of labour, which prevent that, uh, that figure coming down? And you'll know, for example, there are many labour shortages across different industries. Zero hour contracts, people who don't get the guaranteed contractual hours per week. That figure has gone up in recent years. It's currently 920,000. Uh, it's fallen a little bit in the last year or so. It was about a million. So let's say a million people on zero hour contracts. Uh, that's a just under 3% of all jobs. Oh, there's your first slide. Here's a chance. Take a screenshot. Second slide, two of two. Uh, union membership. Yeah, so trade union membership has been falling, of course. It's just kind of leveled off a little bit in recent times, but it's down at 6.6 .6 million people. So only one quarter of people in work are members of a trade union. That's a really important long-term long statistic. Median full-time earnings, if you have an equivalent full-time job, is about £31,000 a year. It's a, yeah, it's about £610, £615 a week if you've got a, a full-time job. Don't forget, median is the middle in a, in a data series. So what would you expect the mean to be? Well, of course, the mean is skewed by the earnings of the super rich, the high income people. And that is now £38,000 a year. So there's a £7,000 gap between median and mean for full time jobs. There's also quite a big gap between mean and median for um, part time work. Gender pay gap. 
hugely topical issue, always will be, I guess. Currently 15.4% for equivalent work. Of course, that's partly composition effects and it's partly the effect of, uh, of uh, the fact that many, many female workers are tend to be in occupations where it's relatively low paid. Lots of reasons for the gender pay gap. We have a video on that in the YouTube site if you want to explore further. It has come down. It's 15.4%. Now, the next one is a really key statistic. Of the population of working age, one in five, 21%, are economically inactive. They're not in work, they're not unemployed, they're economically inactive. Perhaps they're in full-time education. Perhaps they're having to care for uh, a relative, uh, raising a family, for example. Perhaps they are, uh, they've taken early retirement. Perhaps they're suffering from a chronic illness which prevents them working. Or perhaps they've given up the search for work because they've been unemployed for a long time, but 21% of the population of working age are inactive. And certainly in terms of trying to increase our labour supply, that might be something you might want to target with policy. Long-term unemployed people have been in, or people who have been out of work for at least one year, and it's currently around 320,000. It's about a quarter of total unemployment. That's a key stat to have in your revision notes, because you'll know I hope the difference between seasonal, frictional, cyclical and structural unemployment. Most of the long term unemployed have uh, been about out of work for a long time. And of course, they suffer from occupational immobility. They're structurally unemployed. The Gini coefficient is 34.4 percent, or if you want to express it as a proportion, 0.34. A measure of inequality, of course, used in the Lorenz curve. Migration, quite important. A uh, big change happening here. So in 2019, we've had a decade or more of quite strong inward migration. It was uh, 277, 277,000 in 2019. That means there were 277,000 more people came in than left. Uh, that figure more than halved in 2020. We don't yet have the data for 2021, but net migration fell. Uh, partly, of course, due to the pandemic, people leaving the UK, and also, I think, the impact of Brexit. Uh, starting to show through there. The age dependence ratio is 57%. That's where you take uh, the population that's less than 16 and the population that's more than 65, add that together. And then you, uh, you take the population of working age and divide the latter by the former. So it's 57%. A measure of uh, the ageing population there. And a key, state, a key stat to finish with, the government has just increased the minimum wage for adult workers people aged 23 and above, to £9.50 per hour. That was a 6.6% rise, a hefty increase in nominal terms this year. But of course, with inflation averaging 7% in the UK, forecast in 2022, in real terms, actually, that's, that's a pay cut for minimum wage workers. Take a screenshot. Here's your moment. So there we go. Hopefully a useful introduction. That's a, Sorry, no apologies, actually. I'm not going to apologise. I expect my students have really good contextual knowledge of the labour market, and hopefully this video helped. So please stay positive, stay happy, stay focused as the exams approach, and see you for the next video. Take care.